Hey, what's going on? I'm Jeremy Fisher. And I'm Jared McDaniel. And we are excited to get to talk to you about our standalone message from this past Sunday called Under the Broom Tree, which is a reference to Elijah and First Kings in that just uh, crazy, yeah. authentic, difficult moment where Very he's crying out moment. to God. Very real. And uh, we're, we're just super excited to get to dive into this one here today. This is like the, the time of the year when I feel like there's so much pressure in having to be happy. Be happy, right? Smile, sing the Christmas song. Yeah, holly jolly. Skip through all of the stores, yeah. buying your Christmas stuff. Right, exactly. And if you kind of scratch through the surface a little bit, I think there's a large percentage of people that would tell you this is really one of the most difficult times yeah. of the year, right? A, a lot of hurt going on, a lot of negative feelings underneath the surface. Right. And, you know, we referenced this on Sunday, but. Um, I love that quote where Augustine just says that our emotions are like smoke from a fire and you know you have the fire alarm goes off in your house or something you never ignore that you always go trace it back and yeah. figure out what the source of that sort of thing is and um, I think that we could probably learn a lot by opening the hood on this thing and checking the, sure. the, the engine of our souls here and figuring out what's going on so you know so many people are, are dealing with difficulty at this time of the year. What is it about this this season that's just so tough, you think? Yeah, well, I, I think there's a lot of things. I think specifically there's such a focus on, on family right now. And so there's the, you know, Norman Rockwell, this is what Christmas with your family sure. should be like. Sure. And then there's the reality of this is what it's actually like. And you have broken homes and you have, you know, people that have lost loved ones this year and you just have hurt and conflict and all of these things that come up when you just start talking about family. And so I think that's a big part of yeah. it. Yeah. And then again, like you said, there's just a lot of pressure that this is supposed to be the joyous time of year. This should be the, the best time of year. Right. And if you don't feel that way, then there's something wrong with you. It's how it feels. Yeah. And I, it's so interesting to me that the, you know, the church, Big C as a whole, I, I've, I've always heard messages on anxiety. I've heard messages about, you know, during this season, it's like gratitude and thankfulness. W what is it about depression, though, that has scared us off so yeah. much? That's like we never talk about it. Yeah, we never no. want to acknowledge it. You're right. And I think I think anxiety has it has become popular now to talk about that it's, one. It's the wave. Right? Yeah. It's like, let's let's be open about that. Yeah. But then you start talking about depression. I think it's even there's a vulnerability there that sure. seems even scarier it's like oh hey just just be happy man right <laughs> let's not right, talk about right. depression just turn on some caleb like yeah. think happy yeah. thoughts man yeah for sure yeah. for sure well i love i love in this story you know elijah he comes off this moment where uh god calls down he calls down fire from heaven mm -hmm. and the offering is burnt with the prophets of baal and elijah takes them all out back kills mm -hmm. them all it's an incredible yeah. victory and you would think from there that elijah would move on and there would be this sense of everything's going to be okay. God's got a plan. He's, he's bringing victory here. It's one of those moments that we would pray for and say, God, if you just did that in my life, I would never, I'd never doubt, doubt again. again. Yeah. But this happens. And then we find Elijah under the broom tree mm -hmm. and he's alone and he's afraid because he's getting chased down by right. Ahab and Jezebel. And he cries out to God and he, and he literally says, God, I want you to end my life. Mm -hmm. I can't take this anymore. It's so, again, so interesting to me when we think about depression, when we talk about kind of the dark night of the soul, difficulty that we all go through. It's so interesting to me that that doesn't oftentimes follow like one bad thing after another. It ends up happening after these high mm -hmm. mountaintop Christmas yep. Thanksgiving experiences. What What's the story with that? Yeah, I, I think... Well, and I think this is something, I mean, we'd both be willing to admit we've struggled with, mm -hmm. with depression and I struggle with that and anxiety. And I think there's, it just shows the human perspective that even when good things are happening, we're either A, fixating on the one bad thing that happened and letting that rob our joy, sure. or we're just waiting on like the, the shoe to fall. We're waiting on that, the, the bottom to fall out and from under us and we think, well, what you know, but what's going to happen? It's like we're, we're professional warriors. And then yeah. that brings us into this kind of 
darkness. And, and I know that's something I struggle with in my life, even in those moments where things are going good. I'm, I'm a pro at finding the thing that could go bad or the thing that is going it's bad. It's my spiritual gift, yeah, right? That's my For gift. sure. For sure. I get it. You know, we talked uh, on Sunday, you, you heard an illustration about um, Ernest Shackleton, and he led an expedition to uh, Antarctica, and the trip went wrong. It, it was supposed to last just three months, and it ended up lasting a year, and several people died. And um, when they described afterwards the, the toughest part of the trip, they didn't talk about um, the, the elements that they were facing, the, the lack of food. They talked about the darkness mm -hmm. around them and how it just seemed like they, they could put their hand in front of their face, and yet they couldn't see what was out there. They had no hope, it seemed like, for the future. And uh, it, I mean, it's just interesting to me that, that something, we can go through something that, that robs us of mm. such hope and such vision for the yeah. future. And it just happens right up here. It doesn't Absolutely. even necessarily have like a, sometimes a, a external sort of trigger. Mm. Depression is such a, a complicated mm. thing. And I think this would be a, a, a great time right now for you and your group to just sort of talk through what it is that maybe each of you has faced. If it's a, a spectrum, you know, uh, uh, despair on one end, discouragement on one end, and then depression on the other, like where, where have you yeah. fallen on that spectrum? Is there anything in your life right now that's caused you to just feel so weighted mm. down? Take a little bit of time in your group right now to talk about that here. And then we pick back up here in, in the text, and I, I love that God is really faithful to give us these little postures that we can take along mm. the way, just learning from Elijah's life, these different things that we can sort of set ourselves up yeah. in good position to face some of these difficult things. And I love one of the first things we talked about on Sunday was just doing the next right thing yeah. for yourself. And that can look a variety of ways. Um, you know, I don't want to over-spiritualize this, but yeah. really sometimes when it comes to, to mental health and when it comes to depression, one of the best things you can do sometimes is just rest, is Absolutely. to hit the pause button yeah. on life. I love that God literally sends an angel to Elijah just to tell him, hey, get up and eat. Like, yeah. I think we all need people like that in our lives sometimes when we're in that really low pit. Just said, hey, you just need to get up, take care of yourself, you know, get dressed, find some, you know, get some water to drink, find something good to eat. Right. Just take care of yourself. Right, right. Yeah, I love that. Just doing the next right thing. And for several of you, that might look like, you know, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to yeah. put one foot in front of the other. Absolutely. For some of you, it may look like I'm going to make a doctor appointment because mm -hmm. I know that there's something going on that's chemical and mm -hmm. it's physiological and I, I can't control this. It looks different yeah. for, for people. Absolutely. And for Elijah, coming off of such a incredible high, you know he just had to be spent. Yeah. And really, maybe the most spiritual thing he could have done in that moment, right, was yeah. take a nap. I yeah. love that. And another thing, so go take a nap. Yeah, that right might be now. your your action step for today. Is you know just cut the cut the <laughs> CG guide off right now and take a nap. You have our permission as a group group nap. Let's do this. So the next thing that you can do uh, is just simply be honest with mm -hmm. God. I love that when Elisha cries out to God, his assessment of the situation is not entirely accurate. Um, he, he starts crying out saying, you know, this has happened and this has happened. I've been zealous for you. The Israelites have rejected you and I'm the only faithful mm -hmm. person left, which was simply not true. And I love that God didn't send another angel down yeah. to correct him. It's just kind of like God could handle yeah. exactly where Elijah was at. Yeah. yeah, we so often, I think, want to hide or shield our emotions, even from God, yeah. who, who knows everything. And I think it's so helpful I actually, I'm a very emotional person. Don't know if you know that. Um, I'm an Enneagram 4, for those of you who know what that is. <laughs> um, but I actually have a journal that uh, through my counseling, I, I write. And when I'm feeling extra emotional, I just write all of the emotions. I don't hold anything yeah. back. It's, and it looks crazy when I go back and read it. Oh, sure. I think this is some crazy, intense stuff. Yeah. But I appreciate that that's kind of what Elijah did with God. He said, man, these are my unfiltered emotions in this moment. I think yeah. that's a healthy thing for us to do. Yeah. especially with God. Yeah, and I, I love that this is, this is included in the Bible for a reason. You know, this could have very easily, God in his wisdom could have been like, all right, let's redact that, let's yeah. change that, <laughs> let's send the editor to fix this one. But I think that it's placed there for people to know it's okay to be honest with God. Sure. If, if there's anyone in the universe, it's okay to be honest yeah. with. It's God. Yeah, 
Because, spoiler alert, he already knows. He already knows. He's got it figured out. I love that. Yeah. Um, just kind of continuing on in the text and sort of landing the plane here. I, I love uh, that Elijah has that experience where he climbs out on the mountain and it, it mirrors that scene from uh, Exodus 33. Moses is walking out on the mountain. There's thunder, there's mm-hmm. fire, there's earthquake. And God is there to hand yep. the Ten Commandments. And, and remember, Moses has to veil his face. Mm-hmm. And then Elijah, I think, is well aware of this. He's on the same mountain. Sure. There's fire, there's earthquake, there's yeah. wind. You know, He's one earth- of the Moses experience. Yes, he, he mm-hmm. even veils his face in preparation. And yet God was not in any of those things there. And it, it, it really is just so interesting to me how, even in my own life, I have looked to my past and looked to other people's lives and other people's stories and, and thought to myself, if only God would show up in this yeah. way or oh, that yeah. way or this way or that way. And he just has something unique for me. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes it's a whisper. And I don't know if you feel this way, but, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll think to myself like, God, if you just send a sign or if you would oh, just yeah. do this or that, yeah. like if you would have some kind of way that I would, I just undoubtedly be able to recognize yeah. that your hand is at work. Just but this once. Just this once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the truth is like he whispers because he's close, yeah. right? Yeah. That's good. He whispers because he's so near us and it's easy to forget that. Yeah. And I'm like you, I, I either read these stories in the Bible or I hear about these just super crazy miraculous things that have happened in other people's lives. And I'm just like, man, God just, show up in that exact way in my life, you know, do that, do that same thing. And then I'll really get it. But so often, yeah, it's that, it's that whisper. And it's that, that moment of that's exactly how I needed to hear from him sure. right now. Sure. And not how, you know, Elijah, that's exactly how he needed to hear from God right yeah. now was in the whisper. Yeah. I think this would be a great time right now too to just take a moment with your CG and just talk about what God is saying to you. And, uh, some people would say, I've never heard an audible voice in my life. Um, what is God saying through his word to you? What is it that you feel like God has got you moving towards right now that might not be this grand illustration, but just this still small voice that he's calling you towards? And then finally, the last thing, um, and I, I love this, but God calls Elijah not to a new task after this entire experience, but he actually calls him to go back to where he was. And, uh, you know, if depression is a cave, the entrance is, is kind of the exit as well, where it's like, it's, it's easy to uh, forget the, the normal side of things and quit paying the bills yeah. and quit answering the phone and isolate yourself from people and quit trying yeah. at work and just sort of give up on things. I love that he calls Elijah to get up, go from the mountain and go back the way that you came. Face it. Yeah. E- essentially saying, you can have all the faith in the world, but if you don't face it, it's never gonna be fixed. Yep. It's never gonna change. Um, and so I love th- this thought of that we're going, we're going back the yeah. way that we came in order to face some and, of and these things. And had he here. not done that, because Elijah thought he was all alone, and he told God, I'm the only one left, you know. And had he not gone back, he would have never found out. That's not true. God had, you know. 7,000 people <laughs> yeah. wait for him. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think so many times we stall out and we just want to give up and, and God is saying, no, just, just step back in there. I'm going to go with you and, and you're going to discover that there's so much out there for you yeah. that you didn't see before. Yeah, you know, we've, we've had a great time just sorting through some of this and thinking through all the different layers of what it means to be discouraged or mm-hmm. depressed. And we know that this is a really complicated topic. There's, For sure. I mean, we're, we're, I love the, the term psychosomatic. We're, we're the kind of beings that are multi-layered where it's, there's a spiritual component, there's an emotional, there's a physical, and whenever one of these things gets out of whack, it's really easy for us to just sort of turn into something else. And so with such a complicated topic like this, we want to remind you guys that there's several resources out there. We want to invite you to check out uh, the Vail Counseling Center that we're connected to, Christy Westmoreland over Mm -hmm. here on our Sea Life staff. All great resources and all great things that you need to check out. Our support groups, our journey groups, there's so many great things. Don't be afraid to talk to people about this. Yeah having a conversation and getting this out there that, that's step one and finding yeah. you know help yeah yeah well, we hope this has been a great conversation starter for you guys and uh, we look forward to the next time we get to see y'all